In the year 2011, the Jewish community lost many precious souls. Some of them more well known than others, but all of them made special contributions of their own that touched the lives of many of us. In sacred memory, we remember many of them with you now. Beginning with revered rabbis, American-born Rabbi Nussin Finkel, head of Mir Yeshiva in Jerusalem, said to be the world's largest yeshiva. Rabbi Finkel's funeral drew an estimated 100,000 people. Dove Beryl Schwartzman, a Haredi rabbi, Talmudic genius, and Rosh Yeshiva of Yeshiva's Beis HaTalmud in Jerusalem, and co-founder of the first yeshiva in Israel for Balei Tshuva, those returning to Jewish practice. Rabbi Moshe Yes, a folk and rock musician whose song My Zeda remains popular in Orthodox camps and youth groups, who performed with rock artists such as David Crosby, Jefferson Airplane, and The Association. From academia and business, Dr. Rosalind Yalow, the first American-born Jewish woman to win a Nobel Prize, and the first American-born woman to win a Nobel Prize in science. Daniel Bell, a distinguished Harvard professor, best known for his contributions to post-industrialism, and who in 1967 saw the power of a way by which tens of thousands of computer terminals would be able to access all types of information services, retail ordering, and billing services, which of course became the Internet. Vivian Harris, who founded the British newspaper, The Jewish Telegraph, in the dining room of her home in the city of Salford. Ira Michael Heyman, a former member of the Board of Trustees at University of California, Berkeley, who championed affirmative action as university chancellor and who went on to become the secretary of the Smithsonian Institution. Erwin Schneiderman, self-described as a kid from the Jewish ghetto of Brooklyn who became a lawyer and a philanthropist who fought for abortion rights, supported Brooklyn College, the Central Park Conservancy, and who guided the New York City Opera for a decade. Murray Handworker, who built his father's hot dog stand into a world-renowned franchise known as Nathan's. Evelyn Lauder, daughter-in-law of cosmetic entrepreneur S.D. Lauder, who helped create the pink ribbon that became the symbol for breast cancer awareness. Helen Rossner, one of the surviving Jews rescued by Oscar Schindler, made famous by the Academy Award-winning Schindler's List. Herbert Weibon, founder and president of Americans for a Safe Israel, who argued that any Middle East peace treaty had to guarantee Israel defensible borders. David Broder, Pulitzer Prize winning columnist for the Washington Post and one of the most respected writers on national politics for four decades. Israelis Moshe Landau, the Israeli Supreme Court Justice who presided over the trial of Adolf Eichmann 50 years ago. Peretz Kidron, an Israeli pacifist, writer, journalist, and translator whose work included translating the memoirs of Yitzhak Rabin, Ezer Weitzman, and the biography of David Ben-Gurion. Eli Hurwitz, an Israeli industrialist who was born in Jerusalem in 1932, fought in the 1948 War of Independence, and grew to become chairman of the board of Teva Pharmaceutical Industries. In 2002, Hurwitz received the Israel Prize for Lifetime Achievement to Society and the State of Israel. 25-year-old Asher Palmer and his infant son, Yonatan, killed by Palestinians when a huge stone was thrown through their car windshield. 
the Fogel family of Itamar, all murdered in their sleep by Palestinian terrorists, Uri Fogel, Ruth Fogel, and their children, Yoav, Elad, and three-month-old Hadas. Sonia Perez, wife of Israeli President Shimon Perez since 1945 and the mother of their three children. Born in Poland, Sonia moved to pre-state Israel when she was only four years old and avoided the public spotlight. But whenever she traveled with her husband, she was always sure to light Shabbat candles just before Friday night sunset, as she had done her whole life. From the world of politics, Fanny Edelman, an Argentinian politician who served as president of the Communist Party of Argentina until the day of her death. John Adler, a Democrat in the U.S. House of Representatives from New Jersey's 3rd Congressional District, who served from 2009 till 2011. Charlotte Bloomberg, mother of New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg, who died at the age of 102 and whom her son described as an enduring and prominent presence in his life. From the world of entertainment, Jill Hayworth, who played Karen, the voice of love and compassion from the immortal classic film, Exodus. Amy Winehouse, British pop diva whose substance abuse overcame her, ending her promising career at the age of 27. Sam Fink, an American calligrapher who illustrated and inscribed editions of various historically significant American documents. He also illustrated a wonderful version of the Book of Exodus. Louis Silverstein, art director of the New York Times, who in 1960 resigned the newspaper, doing away with some old-fashioned trappings, including the outdated hyphen between New and York in the logo. Al Davis, the controversial football Hall of Fame owner who took the NFL to court in the 1980s and won the right to move his Oakland Raiders to Los Angeles. Gil Cates, the producer and director who oversaw a record 14 Academy Awards ceremonies, and he was the founder of the Geffen Playhouse in Los Angeles. Bert Schneider, creator of The Monkees and producer of the 1969 landmark film Easy Rider, starring Peter Fonda and Dennis Hopper, and the film which launched Jack Nicholson's career. Schneider also produced Five Easy Pieces and The Last Picture Show and won an Oscar in 1975 for his anti-Vietnam War film, Hearts and Minds. And he read a telegram of greeting to the North Vietnamese at the awards ceremony. Larry Rickles, who earned an Emmy Award for his 2007 documentary about his father, famed comedian Don Rickles. Broadway photographer Leo Friedman, whose photograph of Carol Lawrence and Larry Kurt as lovebirds chasing down a Manhattan street became the enduring emblem of the musical West Side Story. Mr. Friedman also photographed more than 800 other shows, including My Fair Lady, Cabaret, and Fiddler on the Roof. Sid Melton an American actor known for his roles as the incompetent carpenter in the sitcom Green Acres and as Uncle Charlie Harper, proprietor of the Copa Club in the Danny Thomas sitcom Make Room for Daddy. Sherwood Schwartz, who worked as a joke writer on Bob Hope's radio show and wrote such TV classics as The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, Gilligan's Island, and the Brady Bunch. Leonard Stone, an American actor who played supporting roles in more than 120 television shows and 35 films, and played the role of the father of the golden ticket winner in the Gene Wilder film, 
Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Jazz piano great George Shearing, knighted by the Queen of England, who wrote Lullaby of Birdland and created a sound and feel to the emerging genre of jazz in America. Jerry Lieber, the lyricist who wrote some of the most enduring classics in the history of rock and roll, including Hound Dog, Yakety Yak, Stand By Me, and On Broadway. Len Lesser, who played Uncle Leo in the sitcom Seinfeld and was a character actor for decades, appearing also as Chaos Agent on the sitcom Get Smart. Charlie Callis, an American comedian and actor most well known for his work with Mel Brooks, Jerry Lewis, and Dean Martin, and known for his role as the restaurant owner and former con man on the Eddie Albert Robert Wagner television series, Switch. Comedian David Fry, best known for his political impersonations, most especially that of Richard Nixon. Don Kirshner, the rock and roll impresario who was the mastermind behind the monkeys, who introduced Billy Joel to television audiences, and the man who launched a dozen megastar careers, including Carol King, Neil Sedaka, and Neil Diamond. Hal Cantor, one of America's most prolific and successful writers, producers, and directors during the golden age of television, principally for comedy actors such as Bob Hope, Jerry Lewis, and George Goebel, and for sitcoms like All in the Family. Growing up Jewish in the Deep South, Hal gave credit for his strong sense of humor to his need for a defense mechanism against anti-Semitism. Arthur Lawrence, who wrote scripts for some of the most famous hits of stage and screen, including West Side Story, Gypsy, and The Way We Were. Sidney Lumet, one of Hollywood's greats who directed 12 Angry Men, and a host of other great American films. Debbie Friedman, an American composer, singer, and song leader who revolutionized Jewish music for young and old alike by combining English and Hebrew texts and ideas with her striking melodies. Peter Falk, the beloved movie and television actor, most well known for his award-winning portrayal of the brilliant, rain-coated television detective, Columbo. And Elizabeth Taylor, a film superstar since her film debut in National Velvet in 1945, she was known to generations of moviegoers for being a sex symbol, for marrying many husbands, especially for her stormy, passionate marriage to Richard Burton, who played opposite Miss Taylor in the 1963 classic Cleopatra. And the couple would ultimately do 11 movies together, including Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, for which Miss Taylor won her second Academy Award. Elizabeth Taylor converted to Judaism in 1959 when she married impresario Mike Todd and became a passionate and devoted Jew. And one day at the Waldorf Astoria in New York City, the most exquisite and penetrating pair of blue eyes suddenly confronted me and seemed to take up the entire world as Elizabeth Taylor walked by on her way to a private meeting with the then Israeli Prime Minister, Menachem Begin. Zecher Tzadik Livracha, the memory of them all, will forever be a blessing.